Keyshill and SureDog.com. I'm here with Beck Rawlings. She's about to make her Bellator debut against Ilara Joanna in the main card of Bellator 231, which goes on tomorrow night at the Mohegan Sun Event Center. Beck, how you doing? I'm good, really I good. Didn't, I didn't give you a proper introduction. I should have said bare knuckle boxing champion in yeah. Hall of Famer. Yeah. How, 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 how's <laughs> crazy. that feel? Uh, crazy, actually. It just still feels surreal. Like it's, it hasn't sunk in. You know, I see my belt in the in the lounge room every day, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm world champ of that shit. So yeah. <laughs> still doesn't feel real. <laughs> so let's talk about you. People knew from you from Invicta, the Ultimate Fighter show. You had a run in the UFC. And you left, did a bit of knuckle boxing. Why, why the return to MMA? Uh, you know, I feel like I've had unfinished business in MMA. I left um, on a bad note, you know. I definitely feel like I didn't showcase what I'm capable of, and I always wanted to transition back. You know, I felt like I could have, but I needed to go out there and put on a performance and really show people what, I'm, what I am made of, um, what I'm capable of in MMA. So I definitely always had plans to come back. I wasn't going to leave forever, but I had heaps of fun in Ben Uncle, and I just feel like the time was right to come back. And um, Bellator just felt right. I feel like I belong here. It feels good to be here. What's been the biggest change going from, you know, your last fights were in the UFC, uh, you're going to their main competitor? Better to Bellator. What has been the biggest change from you know from a promotional perspective? Um, not much yet. I haven't really. This is like the first week I've been here and met everyone. So I know everyone feels welcoming. It feels you know professional and organized. So um, it's, it's been good here. I think I think definitely like the biggest difference I guess you could say is this, um, I feel like I can be myself. <laughs> There's not as many rules, you know, they're not trying many... to tell me how to be and how to talk and how to look and no tattoos and no this, so yeah, I feel yeah. like less rules and I, I don't do well with rules. <laughs> yeah, was there was there a certain rule that UFC enforced that you were like, this is this is ridiculous? Um, it was more like they just they didn't want me to get as many tattoos, like head tattoos and stuff. Really? Yeah. But so. but I mean some some people don't like tattoos, other people I mean, you see the suicide girls, they're very popular, yeah. like, like... Like, I think definitely, like, everyone in my age, especially in Australia, everyone's got tattoos, it's just our culture, it's just how we are, so, um, I just feel like I have to be my sense. And then, I mean, not every guy likes the Paige Van Zandt look, some people like That's the Beck right. Rollins look. We all have right? different tastes. <laughs> yeah, they, they so, didn't like that. Uh, you know, I don't know if they didn't like it, it's just, I, I don't know if they got sick of updating my character on the UFC Oh, okay, game. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, yeah. I don't know, it's not that they said they didn't like it, it was just, that was one of the things, they're like, hey, stop getting so Tattoos. They got to make it where it's an option where the, the player can add the tattoos, add tattoos. to those different and, and change them. And, yeah. and I mean, some fighters probably need a little fixing on their yeah. tattoos, you know? Yeah, so yeah, they definitely, they probably got sick of taking photos and uploading them to my character. That's yeah. probably more where it was coming from. <laughs> so you did the bare knuckle boxing thing, you were 3 and 0. How hard was it to leave that, being that, I mean, you're undefeated, you're the champ? Like, how hard was it to, to go back to MMA? Um, you know, I really enjoyed fighting Ben Uncle. I, I definitely have a real love for it, but I love MMA as well. And it just felt like the right time. You know, I fought out my contract. Um, I was a free agent at the time, and Bellator came knocking. So um, I just felt like I needed to come over here, and I felt like I, I've heard a lot of good things about Bellator that they treat their fighters right. And uh, so, you know, I, I felt like it was a good move for me. I've got two kids to feed. Um, I've got to go with, with a reliable c promotion, and I know I'm going to get good fights. So it was kind of a good good choice, I think. Do you think that your time with uh, bare knuckle? Do you think that bare knuckle boxing has helped you in MMA and it made you a better MMA fighter because of training? Absolutely, absolutely. I think I, I really um, showed a skill set out there. I've honed in my my boxing, um, my accuracy. I've learned how to use my reach, my distancing, um, how to use my hands more. And so I definitely feel like you're going to see that aspect in my fight tomorrow night. Obviously I've got more weapons as well, but you're going to definitely see my boxing on, on Showcase tomorrow night. You, you had a little bit of a losing streak on your way out of MMA. A lot of them were really close decisions. I mean, like the Jessica Rose clock fight, I can win either way, the Ashley Evan Smith fight. Mm -hmm. Like these, these are really close fights. Have you and your team sat down and looked at the tape and say, well, this is why we're losing close fights. And this is what we have to improve. You know what? I just don't know what judges want. You could say I could go out there and do it and fight a certain style, and the judges could just not see it for what it is. So, in the back of my head, I just need to finish these girls. I just need to go out there and take it out of their hands because I just don't know what they want from me. <laughs> um, you know, I can be aggressive and, and, and rock someone and still not get the decision. I can be more cautious and sit back and use my jab and 
still not win. So I definitely feel like I've just got to go out there and put the pressure on and, and make make them break and, and take it out of the judges' hands. So let's talk about your first fight. You're going against Alara Joanna. Mm -hmm. She's a girl. She trains under the Pitbull brothers. She, she's very aggressive. I don't know if you've seen tape. What do you know about her and how do you feel about the matchup? Uh, she's, yeah, she's very aggressive. That's a good word to um, explain her. She's aggressive. She's tough. She's going to bite down on her mouth guard. She's going to swing wild punches, but she's going to look for the takedown. She's going to want to try and take it to the ground. She's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, purple belt. And I definitely think she thinks she's got the advantage on the ground. I don't think that's the case. I'm ready for anything she, she's going to bring, but I don't think she's going to touch me. I'm going to hurt. I'm going to break her face. She's just not going to get near me. She's fought on a lower regional scene. You've been you fought at the highest level. How much of that experience being that you're used to this? You're used to being in an arena full, people rocking, people knowing who you are. Like how much of that, that experience matters? Definitely like I've fought some really tough opponents. I've fought some of the best girls in the world. So it, it gives me an edge in I know she's not bringing anything insane that I haven't seen before. But girls like her will rise to the occasion. Uh, I'm a good I'm a good win on her belt. So she's gonna come, she's gonna come hard and she's definitely a an opponent I'm going to be cautious of. I'm not going to look past her, but I definitely think that my experience, my skill set, she's she's not going to have a good night tomorrow night. Obviously, you just said you don't want to look past her, but you know I got to ask this question. You're part of Bellator. You're getting the promotional bump. You're you're a big name. Obviously, you're an attractive young lady. You're the person that that Bellator would want to promote. That said, how far away do you think you are until you're challenging, say, uh, Lee Malay McFarland, or, or you're challenging or fighting bigger names? Like, how long? Uh, yeah, you know what? I think I can beat her now. Okay. <laughs> but I am, I'm here to solidify my spot in the division. I'm not going to try and, you know, jump in and just say, hey, I want a title shot. I'm going to earn my spot and, and climb, the, climb the rankings. Uh, so, you know, I think in three or four fights, I definitely think I can, I can have that title shot and take that belt. But I'm just going to take it one fight at a time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I spoke to Scott Coker yesterday. I asked him about uh, Kerry Melendez requesting a strawweight division. The division you used to fight it. I know you moved up, but any chance you'd ever go back? Hell no. Def definitely not. Hell no. Hell no. Okay. That's a hard no for me. No. Okay. I, I was too unhealthy cutting that weight. Um, I'm definitely fitter, faster, stronger at this division, and uh, I can focus more on getting better and training, um, training for the fight, not training to, to hit the scales and make weight. That's how I got when I was fighting at straw weight. I was, my fight was the scale, not my opponent, and that's not that's not good for anyone's career. Uh, my final question, you know the fans love a prediction. Tell me what's your prediction, and what are the MMA fans that kind of got used to you on a little bit of a skid in the UFC, what are they going to be saying about you come the day after your fight? Oh, they'll still hate. <laughs> They'll still find a reason to hate. Um, but my prediction, I, I'm just predicting violence and predicting her bleeding a lot. Good luck to you. Thank you. Can you just show your bro? You want?